all you party people, welcome to another episode of ARG Presents. I am Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who, much like myself, started as a portable, became a luggable, and now he's an immobile. I give you <laughs> the Brent. What's I up? Feel, I feel like I've upgraded to supercomputer levels. I just <laughs> sit in a room, just just let me go. I do my thing. I'm just proud I made up a new word, immobile. <laughs> That's a word, isn't it? Sure, why not? <laughs> We're both immobile. So, thanks for joining us this week. If you joined us last week, we did a little thing where we spin this <laughs> crazy wheel. We made a crazy deal. And this week, Brent, it's wacky, wacky week. Yeah, we need better agents. We're going to be playing games, and I can't believe we can find games this day, but we're going to be playing games on the Tandy Model 100 portable computer. Yes. The portable, man. One of the first. Now, this computer, when it came up, I'll admit, on the wheel last week, I honestly didn't remember what the hell this was. All right, I'll be honest with you here. And then, once I looked at it one time, I was like, bam, I got it. I remember this thing from when I was a kid. <laughs> because these things were sort of, kind of, all over the place at the Radio Shack, and they, were, they, were, they looked awesome. And if you remember back in the day, you get these Radio Shack catalogs. Right? Absolutely. They were all up in it. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, for those of you that don't know what these things are, we're going to give you a, a brief rundown here of what this bad boy is. Uh, this was a portable computer in an age where you really didn't see portable computers. And really, this is, this is sort of an anomalous system, I think. It is. Uh, I, 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 do you... Would you consider this a, a portable computer? Oh, God, yes. Now, I, I mean, the portability is not in question. It's very portable. Yeah. Uh, but do you, do you consider this uh, advanced enough to be considered a computer? Absolutely. Oh, gosh. Okay. Absolutely. No, I agree. I'm, and I'm and on you, board. Will, you will understand why I've got a little rundown here before we get to the actual gameage here. Let's talk about this bad boy. So, what the heck is this thing? Well, this is the TRSA, as I mentioned, Model 100. Now, this was developed, this is, this is developed by an outfit called uh, Carosia. That's K Y O C R E A, Cairo Sierra. Also in conjunction with Tandy and Microsoft. All right, this was a triple, wow. a triple threat. So this thing came out in '83. Yes. Okay. Now listen to this. Uh, the 8K version of this debuted for a a price of one thousand ninety nine dollars, <laughs> yeah. which was it's it's twenty almost twenty nine hundred bucks yeah. in today's cash. This is U.S. There was a 24K version. This is the one you really wanted. Uh, it debuted at $1,399, which is um, is thirty almost $3,600 by yes. today's money. Now, uh, I have read that there, the difference between the 8K and the 24K is substantial, and the 24K is the one you really want. So, how many units does this thing you, you figure they sold, Brent? Not many. I will say... Uh, 100,000. Prepare to look dumb, my friend. All right. Guess what? Six million. Woo! They sold six million I guess, of these. you know, this was really before my time. Yeah, Because I would have been six. So, okay. That is, that, I didn't see them, but that doesn't mean they didn't exist. So, this this computer had, uh, you could get anywhere between 8 and 32K uh, on it. This thing had an, a display... Of eight lines, forty characters LCD. Now, if you're if you're listening at home, you can't see the video we're showing. Picture a uh, picture a, a keyboard. Picture something you know, roughly a, a slightly the size of like a ZX Spectrum. Let's just pretend with a real keyboard on the bottom and a gray LCD screen along the top, kind of a long, sort of thin screen. This is the way I. This is the way I thought of yeah. it. Yeah. You take those TI-85 calculators yeah. and you stretch them out as wide as a keyboard, there yeah. you go. Yeah, right, correct. <clears throat> uh, now, get this. This Now, this thing had a full 56-key keyboard, eight yeah. programmable function keys, and four command keys. When we say full keyboard, this had a QWERTY-style keyboard that was good to go. Yeah. This isn't crap. This isn't kind of rubber keys. This, isn't, this is a keys. legit keyboard, all right? That's important. So here's the big dog of this. This thing has an external power supply, six volt power supply you can hook up, or, and this Screw is the, my that. favorite part, four AA batteries would run this thing. Now, allegedly, four AA batteries would run this thing for like 20 to 25 hours. That is substantial. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and so this thing was, when, when I say this thing was portable, it was good to go. Uh, the specifics, in case you're interested, I, I, I think they're kind of neat. Uh, this had a 8-bit uh, Oki ADC85. Uh, it, it ran at 2.4576 megahertz. So, what, sure, why not? not? Not a speed demon uh, on this thing. Didn't need to be. Um, this had a standard ROM socket. Uh, so that you could, so you could actually, uh, uh, I mean, this thing came with stuff built in, which yeah. I'll get to that here in a moment. I mentioned it had it eight, was basic, right? It had a bunch of stuff. Yeah. It had eight line, 40 character, like monochrome screen. These screens are pretty good. Now, there was a, some people would complain that these things were tough to see in certain lights or whatever, but I mean. The, the nature of the beast. It's not bad. They're not bad at all. So, <clears throat> what the, what could this thing do? Well. Coming out of the package, here's what you got, right out of the gate. This thing came with BASIC built in, Microsoft yeah. BASIC. By the way, uh, Bill Gates has said this machine has a special place in his heart because it's one of the last machines he did in the majority of the CMOS coding and stuff. So he actually, Bill Gates had a hand in the, uh, putting the, the, the firmware and stuff in this thing. Nice. <clears throat> this thing has a legit BASIC, right? This isn't some kind of crap BASIC. It's got legit BASIC. So it came with BASIC right out of the gate, built in. All right, you were good to go. It also comes with a uh, real-time clock that had date and time and yep. uh, on it, which this sounds kind of pedestrian by today's standard. That was big back in the but, day. But yeah, th this was sort of a big deal. It also had a, like an address book in it. It also had a, a, a word processor. Now, this was this word processor was not what I would call uh, the king dong of word processors, but it allowed you to type in work. And it had built-in wrap around. It had basically word wrap on it, which was yeah. at this point was something you didn't see. So you wouldn't have lines of text that ended with like a W O and the R D got kicked off the other side. It was a full wrap around text. You're probably asking yourself, well, what in God's name could you type on this thing? Well, you could type a lot, and you've got to consider that when people were on airplanes or uh, getting or riding around somebody's car, there were no, there really were no easy to use. Uh, portable systems that you could sit on your lap and type with a full keyboard like this that weren't that didn't weigh a thousand pounds. This was quite an incredible little machine back in the day uh, for, for what it did. <clears throat> it also had, uh, it, like I said, it had a scheduler in an address book. It also had, and this is something that uh, I think is real interesting, on the, uh, amongst the ports on the sides of this thing was a modem port. Yes. And the mo it's like it had a built-in modem with a breakout cable. Now, you could do this, you could use the modem in two different ways. They had a, uh, you could use an acoustic coupler uh, attachment that you could hook to the phone. And this thing had two switches on it to, uh, to change the origin, or the sender receive on the modem and to change the type of modem you were using. All right. But you could use a, uh, you could actually hook this thing up to an acoustic coupler or a direct link modem. And this thing had built in telecommunications software. So you, yes. could, you could telecommunicate with this thing. Uh, right out of the box, which is impressive. Now, I saw this thing hooked up to one of these acoustic couplers. It's cool. Uh, uh, an, again, an amazing achievement in 83 when something like that, I mean, just think about how weird it is that you can take this thing on the road with all that battery life and have a modem built in. Absolutely. I mean, for people who have to do field work, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, as Curtis and Chat mentioned, journalist, yeah. uh, to type up something, grab a modem, hook it up, yeah. send it on its way, Plus, you've got just businessmen who are traveling from office to office yeah. that still need a computer to, uh, you know, do reports on the fly or you know jot down notes and whatever. Perfect for that kind of crap. Correct, and I will, I'll get onto that later. But this was a, a journalistic favorite. So aside from the modem, this also had a, a, a parallel printer port in it that was compatible with Radio Shack printers at the time. Uh, you could click them right in. Uh, so that was nice. It also had a, a, a RS-232 uh, communications port in it. Now get this, Brent. It all, I should mention it also had a cassette audio I.O. port, which I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. But this thing can hook up just like a lot of the you know, uh, micros of the day. This is that you can use cassette to load and, and save. Absolutely. <clears throat> also, this thing had a port for a barcode reader. In case you want to use this sure. like to do inventory or something, you could actually hook up a barcode reader. Pretty slick. That's all, yeah. If you think about it, how long it was before you saw bar people using little portable barcode readers around. This was 83. So this was quite a, quite an amazing accomplishment back in the day. Now, the uh, uh, 
the uh, cassette recorder. And this is funny because if we're, as we record this, the Spectrum Next has been released in the past couple weeks. And which is a brilliant bit of kit that where they've taken the original Spectrum and sort of up, ima reimagined an update that would have happened for the next generation. And one of the neat things they did was they put a cassette, uh, they put a cassette port in it so you could actually still load your stuff off tape, your old Spectrum tapes. Well, one of the problems I've seen a lot of people having is ha setting the volume correctly to get these things to work right. right. Now, we used to load stuff off cassette all the time back in the Coco days. So we're, this is old hat to us. <clears throat> but this thing here, amazingly, in 83, had a very similar problem. It had a heck of a time with the volume settings where it's to load and, and uh, save stuff on tape. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, Radio Shack made a cassette uh, recorder specifically for these types of instances that would auto-set the volume. And so I'm guessing a lot of people just don't have these cassette recorders anymore because that... That was definitely the way to go. Yeah, and I remember that the if you'll recall when we did the uh, when we when we took a look at the uh, 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 what was a System eighty uh, the Australian Ooh, machine. Remember it, it had that version that had the the cassette thing with the auto equalizing thing right built into yes. it. So which I remember how we thought that was a good idea. Yep, <laughs> there you go. It was a great idea. So <laughs> we'll go back and give them their props. So <clears throat> let's talk about this little machine from the non technical perspective. So, that's easy for me to say, perspective. Um, this thing was made by this uh, Kairosia and then sold in Japan as the Chirotronic 85, okay? Uh, so, Tandy did not produce this thing. They actually just, they licensed it. Uh, it didn't do well in Japan. So, Tandy licensed it, and it was sold through Radio Shacks. We've talked about Radio Shack before, if you're not Absolutely. familiar with it. They were a big player back in the day. I, I think around, in this time... They probably had uh, 1,100 stores or more. Yeah, they were in, they were huge in America, in the for U.S. Especially. and Canada. Yeah. Um, so the, there were other. A lot of people asked me as I was getting ready for this. I was like, is this the same thing as this? Is this the same thing as that? Uh, this is the same thing. Uh, this is the same the same platform that was used for the Tandy TRC Model 100 was used for the Ol Olivetti M10, uh, the N NEC PC8201, and the PC8300. They were they were with some minor alterations uh, to to the uh, to the you know to make it their own. Let's just say, just like Tandy did. So um, let's talk about the the built-in programs a little bit more here. So, like I said, you've got all these built-in programs. So, what else could you do with it? I mean, you really you could use the programs that came with it, and you'd be set. Yeah, that's probably worth the price of admission right there. But this thing came with a complete and robust basic. Uh, yes. And so what did that do? Well, that allowed you to write in your own programs, even load programs uh, that other people wrote. And this thing had a pretty, uh, a, a pretty substantial homebrew community. It was actually quite, it was pretty embraced back in the day. And a lot of people did all kinds of, you know, you know nutty stuff with it. Not the least of which you could actually, uh, you could actually use the RS-232 ports and hook this up to like some of the TRSA Model 1, 3, transfer stuff back and forth that way. They also, you know, a lot of people didn't like the uh, cassette deck, so one of the alternatives that came out was the Tandy Portable Disk Drive, which came out in 86. <laughs> now get this. Money! It was a serial device <laughs> that was, you could store 100K of data on a 3.5 inch single-sided double density disk. So that's kind of neat. And it's the same drive that was in the Brother FB100 knitting machines, which I thought that was... <laughs> That was, kind of, that was pretty good. Sure, why not? Yeah, I like it, man. You know, uh, another thing, when you were talking about the homebrew stuff, this had several books uh, of programs that you could type in yourself. I, I flipped through a few of them that, <clears throat> you know, it was 25 programs in each book. And uh, I would imagine that was very popular back in the time to give yourself, you know, that little extra oomph. Because some of them were like, uh, like very... Uh, rudimentary database programs yeah. and uh, business applications. So uh, having that kind of support by having basic, huge for a device like this. You know, our, our in the chat, our buddy Curtis, who's a, the a TRS-80 genius, and I had read this, you could actually use the uh, barcode scanner to actually scan programs in for magazines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you can, and so that's an easy entry because really... What was the Achilles heel of this thing? I mean, and it's just, it was inherent. It's I.O., getting stuff into it and getting stuff out of it. Now, if you're just typing stuff and then wanting to export it, 
you're going to be using something like a like that disk drive peripheral or the, or saving on cassette. I would say that's like not that. the worst thing about this machine. I didn't say it was the worst thing. It was just the hardest thing to do is get stuff on and off of it. Uh, because, I mean, you can even transfer stuff over the modem, but depending on, you know, this is 83, so you're... you're Various, app. you can't just sure. put a floppy disk or a you know, normally out of the box or a cartridge in it and go. Sure. And so you're kind of you're gonna have to be at the mercy of one of these. Although it did have RAM slots in the back that you could put stuff. Yeah. You know, your bigger, more substantial programs. So, uh, yeah, I, I, they went a long way, in my opinion, for just what you were saying. Be able to get programs in and out of this thing, which was very important. Now, get this. On the back of this thing, there's a there's, there's a switch, right? And because this is this is important too. When you when you turn this on, let's say you load up uh, several basic programs on it. All right. When this comes up, you get like a list of what's on it. Yes. All right. That's what's on it. And when you turn it off and turn it back on, the stuff you put on it's still there. Yeah, as long okay. as your batteries are good or you've got power. It, there's a switch on the back that if you if yeah. you turn it off, <laughs> it it just it gets rid of everything yes. except for the built-in stuff. So if you overfill this thing. It, you can you can use that. There's also a reset button on well, it. Well, sa it up. saves the ROM, right? Right, but I mean, and you, then, th this would get rid of everything right, the on there. The switch just says clear the ROM, but not the internal ROM. It's got its own separate storage ROM, right? Which is your eight and your twenty-four and your thirty-two K. So, something else I thought was funny, just as I, because I, I found all kinds of crazy stuff on this thing. Uh, the Model One Hundred does suffer from the Y two K bug. So, because because the hard coded into the main menu was the 19XX, like for the year. Yes. Now it doesn't actually hurt the thing, and there, are, of course, people made walkarounds, uh, workarounds, so you could actually update it. So that's how that's so, which means people were doing this in, in the year 2000 and, and going forward. Um, the uh, uh, something else that was neat is was well, not that neat. This thing wasn't perfect. It wasn't the speediest thing you ever saw. So when you're typed on it, if you were a good typist like myself, this thing would lag way yeah. behind. So you're not going to be powering through that book report on this thing. This is going to be something you're going to take some time uh, with. Eventually, they came up with a peripheral that would let you hook this thing directly to a television. So you wow, can, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, this was way, way later on, but they did, which I thought that was kind of, I thought that was kind of neat. And you got and it extended the screen. So, I mean, this was like, it became something you could use on a TV at a full screen. Wow. Yeah. That adds a lot of use to this. Well, I mean, you've got to consider this thing was really popular. Yeah. I mean, it's surprisingly popular, if you, if you want the truth. Uh, so, you had a lot of, uh, this was something we mentioned earlier that journalists were really into this machine. It reviewed well. Now, it, it wasn't like across the board, we love it. But it it reviewed well, and one of the reasons was journalists were like using these all over the place. They were the first adapters. You know, they 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 adopted these things and were using the crap out of them. And so most of the time, this thing got pretty good reviews across the you know overall. Uh, it was <laughs> it was heralded as being like an unbelievable step into the portable computer world. Some people tr call this truly the world's first laptop. You know, stuff like that. I mean, these that's are pretty. That's pretty uh, bold. Well, I mean, it, it's bold, but I mean, it, it is what it is. If you think about it, you can do laptop-like stuff on this. No, I, I mean, think it's fair. Yeah. I think it's totally fair. Yeah, yeah. Now, Radio Shack initially claimed that the sales were moderate, you know, and a lot of people said the only people that bought it were journalists at first, but then it eventually it got over. Um, so, uh, the, the guy that worked for InfoWorld mentioned that this thing, he said... I'm not used to giving Radio Shack kudos, but the Model 100 is a brave, imaginative, useful addition to the realm of microcomputerdom and a leading contender for InfoWorld's Hardware Product of the Year for 1983. And it won. <laughs> so this was the InfoWorld product of 1983. Uh, the guy from Byte described it as an amazing machine. Uh, they'd also mentioned that you don't that the uh, uh, the 8K wasn't worth having. You need yeah. to get the one that has the had the, At least had the had bigger had the thing. 24, yeah. yeah. So. That's a lot, a lot to take in right there uh, on this thing. You had a, there was a lot of action. It was a very interesting machine, and one that got over. So you're probably asking yourself, well, ARG presents. This is a, is this about apps and basic? No, it's not. <laughs> so no. let's get to the gaming side of this thing now. Uh, as far as I could tell, this game, this machine had zero. Um, Commercial, really released 
game. Like with a box and right. everything else. They, I, I could not find any. I looked. I yeah. looked. And if someone knows better, let me know. But, Which is shocking. Well, I, it's I not find shocking that, to me. No, because, that's, I find that shocking. Because it's just, you you would uh, assume these people could load stuff from cassette. So, and and, and, I, and also this thing, really, if you look at it, you think to yourself, and I'm sure if you're watching this at home or, you know, having some knowledge of this system, you're like, how are you going to play games on this thing? Well, we actually, uh, we, you know, when, when we picked this, of course, Brent, being a dipstick, he doesn't know what this stuff is. He puts it on the wheel. But I thought, man, this is a good time to try uh, some games that were just like, just let's see what it had, right? I think that was the attitude you had. Absolutely. And so what we did uh, was we took a look at some, at a, some games. Uh, we looked at actually, we looked at two games each, and I kind of threw in an, a, a, a late edition just because I thought it was neat. Yeah. And so we're going to go he through. He forgot to tell me about it, he but don't, yeah. He don't need to know. Uh uh, we're just going to go through and, and show you some of these basic games. All these games are in basic. Uh, the origins of these games, they could have came from, they could have came from a uh, magazine. They could have been typed in just floating around. And when I looked up games for this thing, I only found one game. It was a sort of a uh, uh, first-person maze game, or like a Dungeons & Dragons type game. But, but I didn't like the rules of it, so I didn't, even, I didn't even play it. It was one where if you hit the walls, you take damage. I don't like that crap. So... Let's look and see what we got. We're going to start off. Well, I'll start the show here on these. So let me let me load up the game the machine here, and here we go. So if you're watching home, you'll see the screen uh, right there. These are direct. I did all the scans on these, so these are straight from me playing these games. The first game we're going to look at here is just simply called Boxing. Uh, it seemed appropriate since we were coming off the uh, huge fight in the heavyweight division that saw uh, the Gypsy King... Uh, take the crown. Now we have a boxing champion who also is the linear world champion. And no so one cares about that. Oh, they care plenty. And they care plenty in the UK, buddy. I can tell you that right now. And so, uh, in honor of the Gypsy King, I thought we would do a boxing round. That's right. <coughs> so, if this is the way you honored him, he deserves to come here and beat you up. <laughs> hey, trust me, he would be honored by this. Don't give me that. So, the game, as far as I can tell, is simply called Boxing. It's boxing, uh, but yeah, sorry, you cut my name off, smart guy. So it was boxing.ba, it's a basic game. And this, uh, these games, all, as far as I can tell, I got them from the Club 100 library software, which is uh, uh, one of the support sites. By the way, this machine supported way more than the sword from last week. I found oh, tons yeah. more on this yeah. than I did the sword. So what is boxing? <laughs> well, you pick one to two players. So right there, instantly, multiplayer, all right? You pick how many rounds you want to box. I usually pick three. Yep. You, you get to name your boxer, and then you get to pick the point system you're under. Are you going to play by just winning rounds or the 10-point must system? I always go with the 10-point must system, brother. And then you pick... <laughs> this sounds kind of ludicrous, but then you pick 50 moves, all right? So you pick... Your choices are forward, reverse, duck, block, jab, body shot, and head shot, okay? You pick 50 moves, and then once you've got your 50 moves down... That's when the action begins. What are you laughing at? No, no, keep going. You're doing a wonderful job. Now, you need to know that when you're picking these moves, you don't know what your opponent's going to do, nope. and you don't know the situation uh, of the uh, of the uh, of what's going to be happening. So this is sort of like if you ever played Robo Rally. It's very similar, where you're just trying to guess where your little robot's going to be. No, so you're to pick. no, it's absolutely nothing like Robo Rally. Robo Rally, you see the board and you plan out accordingly. This would right. be like if you played Robo Rally. But you went ahead and set all your moves up before you even got the board out. Now, I, I see in chat people are saying this is a text adventure. That's a trick because now the magic happens. Once you pick your 50 moves. Which takes forever. No, it does. It takes no time. You also, your opponent's different. Like, it, I've seen Champ and Sluggo. Then the graphical portion of the game begins. There's a graphical representation of you and your opponent uh, and the, as they come out to fight. All right, and you've got a condition uh, and an injury uh, counter for each boxer. You've also got a thing that gives you the round and the time. And, it, at the, and then underneath, there's a running commentary of what's happening. Right, so uh, right now, if you're watching at home, my boxer is taking on champ. And you can see uh, all the moves you programmed in ahead of time come into play. So you've got to be, you have to anticipate every move as best you can uh, as, you're, as the two boxers, the pugilists, practice the sweet science right in front of you beautiful graphical <laughs> now listen the graphics on this are kind of neat i mean first of all people are like graphics yes this is the blocky sort of antsy style 
graphic representation of the boxes. A lot of people are stunned to understand that this thing did, they did do graphic games, up graphics and super Fancy quotes. Art. Yeah. But, or, you know, or text characters. Yeah. But, I mean, it works. And again, you've got to understand what you're working on here. I mean, this screen is is small, and it's but you're it's making it happen. And this is a I know uh, 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 one of the uh, people in our Discord I crapped all over this. Game. <laughs> I was like, man, but uh, I thought it was a fine. I thought it was kind of fun to to sit down and play it. And I, I did play many many rounds. One thing you've got to do in this is not. You can't come out and just throw a crap load of shots because you're running out of gas. And yeah. when you run out of gas, you get murdered. Condition is is how often you can punch. It's basically your stamina. Now, what did you think of this one, And Brent? then injury is how much damage you can take before you get knocked out. Did you ever get up from being knocked out? Oh, yeah, out? I always got up because I'm Aaron. I'm Ego Aaron. But how did you, what did you think of this when you played it? You, I'm assuming you played several rounds. I did. <clears throat> I, I did played, you ever win a round? I, did, I never won a round, nor I never did, did I ever either. win a fight. I never won a round. So the first time I loaded this up, it was like, okay, pick your move. And I thought I was going to pick a move, and it, then it was going to do that move. No, that's for losers. And then I was like, it was like, okay, pick another move. And I was like, what's going on? So I was like, click, click, you know, click, click, click. I was like, all right, this is like messed up. So I just started click, 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 click. It's like, okay, you put in your fifth. Moves. That's how many moves a boxer does in one round. At <laughs> that, least 50. That, that, let me tell you something. If you thought 50 moves ahead in like chess, you're a god. This is the way I think in real life. I like to, when I get up in the morning, what am I going to do in exact order? That's Unfortunately, if someone moves a basket six inches to the left, <laughs> your entire day is screwed. You're peeing in the hall. <laughs> That's the problem with that. So you do all this and then you just watch it play out. Yeah. And it, it's, here's the thing. I actually, dig games like this I did, okay so yeah but but 50 way too much it's like an interactive boxing mad lib <laughs> that's what it reminded me of having the boxer start so far away bad move because there are literally like 10 move <laughs> forwards like if you're if the opponent doesn't move right you would have to move forward like 10 times to even reach them well they, it moved you forward a little bit on its own. No, 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 no. I mean, at the very beginning, you move forward to the death without you moving No, you. but, yeah. th but that doesn't do anything. You have oh, to move forward. It sounds nitpicky to me. No. You, you can't tell me reason... when that came on and the visual, the visual interpretation of the box is you, were, you didn't cry a little. Uh, uh, glorious well, I cried tears. a little, but I don't think it was glorious tears. I'm not going to crap on this game oh, because good. it... it it does something that <coughs> certainly modern games don't do, which is not be a game. This is you literally, you type in 50 choices, and then you watch a little movie play, a, a really low-res movie. But, <laughs> yeah, 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 but I'll be yeah. honest, this was not the worst thing I played on this. Oh, wow. So Okay, I, I'll, call, I'll call that a win. But I'm definitely not going to say this was a good game. Wow. No, this was not a good game. This was... This was, uh, you kind of type stuff in and see, see what happens. We got a couple user reviews on this, believe it or not. I, my personal favorite from our good buddy Buck Owens. This guy's popping up everywhere, by the way. He did great in the uh, Coco Challenge the other day. Buck Owens, <laughs> I think it was Buck Owens. I'll make sure here. I don't want to miscredit the man. Uh, <laughs> I know Buck talked about Lunar Lander. Oh, no, I lied. Uh, this was, uh, where, where did that go? Am I, have I lost my mind? I mean, years ago, but we still Oh, here it is, yeah, around. Buck Owen. The Tandy 100 boxing is basically rock, papers, rock, scissors, paper, lizard, Spock, with a boxing theme, hot garbage. Hot I think, garbage? I think that's fair. No, what? <laughs> Our good buddy, Graham Vipke, who I'm sure will give this game a better shake, says, Boxing review. This game is, uh, 3 out of 10 and quite strange. You box without knowing... No, no, you box, quotes... <laughs> without knowing what the opponent is actually doing. The, quote, uh, the gameplay air quotes. <laughs> You're buffering all moves, punches, ducking, etc. etc. And, and, and then it is played back in a review reel type screen. I have no idea why you wouldn't be prompting moves on the screen. It would have made this much better. I don't yeah. know. I kind of like the randomness of it, so that's just no. me. This could have been okay. Uh -huh. Okay, no, let me back up. 
This was garbage. Okay. Okay. What? But this could have been okay if there were less moves. If you only had did five moves and then saw what that did, and you could kind of kind of see what your opponent was doing All right. or how far away they were, I, I think this could have been passable as a game. But as it is right now, it's 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 nothing. All right, let's move on to my second game here. <laughs> this one I'm hoping gets better, <clears throat> more rave reviews. This one's called Sink the Submarine. And this one's by Joe Wasserman. All right, this we actually have a legitimate guy here, and so I think it's the only one that we know who made it. So in this game, again, this game has a rep uh, graphical representation of the action. I love yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, you have twelve missiles uh, to destroy an enemy, uh, an enemy sub. Okay, the, but, you, but they've jammed your sonar. Typical. So typical people not wanting to get shot with torpedoes. All you can tell, well, these are you're shooting. I think you're shooting missiles, aren't you? I'm, I've never, I was never quite sure if you were the sub or you were shooting the sub, or if you were a ship or a shooting the ship. It if doesn't you're matter. The sub, you got to. Okay, go ahead. So the radar, the sonar is jammed. This sounds like they got sonar, like the, they, they podged it together, like something I would do with duct tape and, and random solder. They use the raspberry. So they can, you can only tell how much you miss by and not the direction that you. That's right. So, that this sonar blows. Um, so what you've got to do in this thing, you've got to give the range and the angle uh, that you're going to fire at between the range between 50 and 200, the angle from zero to 180, you know, typical. And it will tell you how close you came to shooting the enemy. No, it won't. Well, it, yeah, it will. Well, it, sort of. Yeah, it tells you exactly how close you came. So, for example, if I put range 50, angle 45, and I shot and I missed, it would say, it might say, you missed the target by like uh, 15 miles, and you have then you have to go again, and you can you and it's got a there's a uh, half moon on the screen that with uh, with all the uh, angles on it that will give you a representation of where your shots were, right? So you use this to triangulate where the enemy is. That's the game. You get 12 missiles, so there's a built-in limit here, and if you if you you have to get within three miles of the target to blow them up. Now, if you're watching this this uh, at, at home, uh, you can see that I'm right out of the gate. I'm killing this guy. I, I was I was like at 3.1, like right out of the gate, and I end up blowing this sucker up because I'm the man. It's not always that simple. So sometimes it's a much di more difficult. But I found this to be a. This reminded me a lot of these old uh, of old basic games where they a lot of this kind of like triangulate like battleship type stuff. I used to play these games and they were, and I always thought they were fun. And this is an excellent representation. I actually played this quite a bit. I thought I found it quite, quite enjoyable. There's no like time limit or anything. You can just sit back. And well, you have a limited number of missiles. Right, but I mean, you don't have to be in a hurry. I like games where you just chill. It's a chill game. Uh, what did you think of? What did you think of sink the submarine? I guess that the name tells you that you're sinking a submarine. We have established that. What did you think of this one, Brent? Uh, this is guess the number. This is guess no, it's the not. yes, it is. This is guess the number with an extra step because there's two numbers you have to put together to equal the number that you're trying to guess. Um, it's actually, graphically, it's pretty well done. It's got a little opening cut scene with a sub driving across the screen. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was nice. That was cool. I like that. Um, uh, the, the screen where you're actually launching your missiles uh, is well done. The lines are very sharp. Yeah. Um, this thing could actually render stuff like this pretty well. I, I, you can see where you can use like little charts and stuff. I, I kind of wish that when you actually defeated the submarine, it, it was a little more glorious. That's it, true. It just kind of blinks. And, it's like you just sunk the sub in dark yeah. text, and then you move on. But, so yeah, uh, I give you that one. But this this game, I actually enjoyed boxing more than this. <laughs> what? This is, um, this is a real game. It, this is a real game. It's true, and, and I'm sure if I would have played. Boxing past like uh, uh, like two three round fights, the novelty would have worn off to the point where I would have enjoyed this game more. Yeah, but uh, being that this was literally just guess the number, uh, not my thing. Uh, and I like guessing numbers, so I don't know. It, I had just, a good time. It's not guess the number. It's, it's actually number. it's no, it's triangulate the. Uh, it, you literally are triangulating the. Uh, the enemy. I mean, it's not guess the number. I mean, you are guessing numbers. I'll give you that. And that, but I mean, it's not just like you're randomly guessing numbers till you win. You have to figure out where you. There's a science to you it. You guess man. a number, and instead of higher or lower, they tell you how far you missed so here, and what your closest shot was. Clearly, this is one of those games where it was just above you, like no, it was above no, your capability. I get how it works. He don't know. You think he? Look at him. He don't know. So 
Uh, I liked Sink the Submarine. Good job, uh, Joe Wasserman. I tried to look this guy up. I didn't find much. Was this your favorite game? Of the four? Yes. No. Okay. But it was it was in the top. It was, was the boxing. Top, it was in the top four. All right. Was boxing? No. no. It was. It, so you're saying of the four games we reviewed, this game was in your top four. <laughs> That's right. Well done, Aaron. So, uh, actually, it's in the top five. Okay. So we also got a review on this one uh, from Graham. Graham reviewed all these. This game is a five out of ten, and not that exciting. Come on, Graham. You are effectively playing blind battleship. You shoot a distance and angle and then receive no feedback other than how far you missed by. It's tough to find the sub, but at least it had more appeal than boxing. He's <laughs> killing me here. It's buggy, too. Sometimes you cannot enter the distance and not, uh, you can only enter the distance and, uh, no, you can't enter a distance and only an angle. I never saw that. I, I also encountered that bomb. Oh, I think yeah. you guys, clearly, there's some sort of a user error. So anyway, that right there was sync the Submarine by Joe Wasserman. Thank you, Joe. Good job. Now, we're going to move into Brent's selections here. Brent went in a totally different direction. I spread orange here. Brent, what's the first game you've got here? Bam. The first game I want to talk about is The Token Affair. Yeah. This, <clears throat> now this, Real subtle. This 100% <laughs> took The Hobbit and said, we're going to make a game out of this. Well... Go ahead. Shut up. Hobbit game. Here we go. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so you are you play as a unnamed stick figure yeah. because <laughs> I, I it, it's weird. They didn't want to use the proper names on some things, but when they talk about the Arkenstone, they're, they're like, yeah, that's the Arkenstone. What do you mean? I don't think they were worried about any of that. I think they just didn't. Well, name they your want, guy. no, because they didn't name Gandalf. They they said you are a a wizard of a. Uh, 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 of, of yeah, but if they, didn't, if wizards. They, didn't, they didn't want to, they didn't want you to feel like you were being uh, made to play Gandalf. You can be whatever wizard you want. That's the way I look at it. Uh, and then they name they drop name drop smog. Yeah. Uh, the, so, what do you do in this game? You are presented with a map of uh, what was it? Twenty rooms, I believe. Twenty one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Twenty four rooms. And you maneuver through these rooms. Uh, no, I'm sorry. 28 Counting. rooms, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you maneuver through these rooms, and whenever you go into a room, it tells you what happens. If you pick up gold, if you find an enemy, if you are faced with a challenge, whatever. And you have to explore this dungeon, or yeah. the caves is, is really what you're exploring, uh, and to find the Arkenstone, which will power the wizard's teleporter to teleport you to a, a different location. Uh -huh. The maze doesn't change. Uh, a level one maze is always a level one maze. So once you figure out where things are, it, it's trial and error. Because a lot of the rooms you'll just walk into and you'll just die. Or you'll walk into a room and there's a chance that you'll die. Or you'll walk into a room and depending on your equipment is whether you live or die. Or how much money you got. Or how much money you have. And the goods you can collect in this are gold. Uh, you can collect the one ring uh, for invisibility's sake. Although, <laughs> it, it rarely works. It's really weird. Uh, and then... You, That's bad when the one ring blows it. Well, you, you know. You got nothing. Well, it's evil. It, um, <clears throat> so, you maneuver through these mazes and you try to find all the stuff. And you try to find the Arkansas and leave. I never did it, even though the maze doesn't change. I went to every room, and there are some rooms have challenges, like uh, guess the number. One yeah. through five, guess the number. If you guess the number right, you get a live. Uh, sometimes you run into goblins, and sometimes you can escape, run away from them, and some you can't. So I'm guessing one of those events uh, will randomly give you the Arkenstone. But I never successfully got it. Did you? Gosh, no. I labored on the first level forever until I realized it was not random. I, which, you know, it, it's hard for me to get this through my brain. I'm like, what? Uh, this game, I will say graphically, this is the most impressive game. You actually get graphics. They draw like yeah. a, a dungeon on the screen and you move a guy through it. And then every room gives you a little like a textual cutscene that tells you what's going on. I like that. I, I actually had played this before you picked it. Uh, since you got your picks in so late, but I played this before you picked it, and I and I almost picked it myself, but it was, I got irritated that it was just a random g failure, which and I'd already had a random failure game, I didn't need another one, and so 
<laughs> I, I didn't, I passed on it. But it does have personality. It is game-like in a way. Yeah. I wish there was, uh, I wish he had used the same structure of the dungeon and the movement and given you something to do in the rooms that was a game as opposed yeah. to just random stuff happening. I, I wish there were more events because about uh, a fourth of the rooms are you walk in and nothing happens. Yeah. It's still, but I mean, this is, that someone took some time on this, and the fact that they, that they use those random, and I'm sure those, the various rooms are made through some sort of random characters that just they can generate, I mean, obviously. Yeah, some kind of anti art, yeah. But it works. He made a full dungeon out of these, out of this art, and it looks like something you can go through. Now. Thumbs up. This was my favorite game. I absolutely played this more than everything else. I, and this was also the game after I played everything else. I came back to this game, and I might come back to it after I'm done here because I want to beat the first level. Yeah. Not being able to find the Arkenstone is driving me crazy. I played this for at least an hour. At least an hour, probably more. Not that I would admit to it. It's not bad. We should mention, while, just while we're here, uh, emulating this machine is a piece of cake. Absolutely. This is one of the easiest, most fulfilling emulations we've ever been a part of. Uh, you can you can get this thing emulator anywhere, and the and you can get the basic games anywhere. And if you're on our Discord, I've already linked this up in, in the ARG Presents area, so if you're on uh, the Amigos Discord, hop over there and grab it. It's fun. And there's a ton of games. Like we were just, we're just scratching the surface. Yeah, here. there's about fifty games. Yeah, there were there were a lot, and there, and there were more to get. We just I just grabbed a bunch, you know. But uh, I was pretty impressed. But yeah, I thought this is a pretty good pretty good one here. Now, this, one thing to say about this game: yeah. this isn't a good game, guys. This is a good game for the Tandy One Hundred. Right. You've got to consider you're on a plane. All right. You're a journalist. You bought these to work on. You're bored. You load up some games, and hey, you can have fun. This is just like a, it reminds me of remedial, yeah. like, phone games back in the day. Yeah, I'm, like Something I said, kill I killed an hour. I mean, in this game, we should mention, there were tons of text adventures and poker games and stuff. So, if this thing had games, it had people, there were games that weren't just, like, crap. You could actually sit around and play them. Poker or blackjack, stuff like that, no problem. So, and those are games you would play on the road. And this is a game you would play on the road as well. I, 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 I didn't hate this. I will say that. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Let's see what DeGram thought about this one, the, uh, the, the Tolkien Affair. This game is a 6 out of 10 and has a decent amount of replay value until you eventually determine the correct path to take. It is se- essentially a room to maze game where some of the rooms have nothing, some have gold, others have enemies. Don't forget pits, Graham. The enemies vary from instant death serpents to payment of gold required by to- trolls to survive and pass through. It probably was a fairly good time waster back in the day. I agree with that one. Absolutely. I, I agree with that one. So, this one, not a dud. So we'll, get, we'll, yeah. we'll say that. I enjoyed it. That's the best I can say about it. Okay, now, moving along, Brent. What now, for the arcade port to end all arcade ports. Not a port. Uh, uh, not a port. This is a port, man. Even the plot doesn't say it's nah. from Phoenix. Nah. Come on. Dude, this is Phoenix spelled with an F. <laughs> yeah. It, they spell it like Ray Phoenix, the luchador, if you're familiar with him. Uh, this is our first action game where you take control of your spaceship and you have to shoot down these phoenix-like birds. Uh, they're what, aliens, it says. It says they're aliens. But they but, do have wings. But they have wings that if you clip, you still get the points. Yeah. It's phoenix. It's I mean, it's phoenix. Uh, what makes this game so awesome is their scoring. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You get score if you hit the wings. You get one score. You get score if you hit them right down the middle. You get some score. Every time you die, you lose score. You're you're not based on lives on this. You're based on time played. And if you reach a certain threshold, you get extra time. Uh, The way you have to play this game is you have to constantly be moving. If you set still for even an instant, the aliens, as they are called... Will Alien. absolutely shoot you, and you are dead. Yeah, there's you, no of dodging it. Um, you have to start the second this game starts. You better have your hand on the uh, greater than less than symbol. Yes, there's no screwing around, or you'll get shot instantly, be in a hole. So every time you shoot, if you miss, the alien gets a little bit closer, yeah. which makes them easier to hit, but also you know they're closer. They're closer to you. So if you miss so many times, they're going to be on top of you and kill you. Uh, I enjoyed this game. Until I discovered the fatal flaw of the screen is too wide. The screen is just too wide. Because you can kill an alien 
on the t total left side of the screen, and the next alien appears on the total right side of the screen. That's part of it, though. Which isn't that bad. It's not like you instantly die, but spending the time that you have to take to get over to the alien to shoot him again is just wasted time uh, that you're not getting you're not getting points for. So I wish they would have actually made the screen on this. Uh, about a third the size, I think it would have been way better. Let me correct you here. Wrong. Everything you said, wrong. You dumb. What? This is, this is the best game of the bunch right here. The best. I it's the second best, so, right. here's what's great about this game. He didn't even mention it, okay? Aside from the fact you have to keep moving, or this thing will hit you with its death ray and you lose points. Uh, which, that's cool. And the ray is cool. I mean, this thing doesn't screw around. If you stop moving for an instant, this thing has pinpoint accuracy if yeah. you move around the screen. Kills you every time. The key part of this game is the time limit. You've got a time limit on this I thing that counts. No, no, no. You didn't stress it enough. Because <laughs> when this time limit's over, there's no extending the time limit. That's your score. No, no, no. You can extend the time limit if you get a high enough score. I never, I never, yeah. never saw it that. It even says that in the instructions. So, you have to go quick and you have to be precise. Yes. You can wing this thing and get some points, but you need to hit this thing right in the middle, and that's what makes it great. I had a lot of fun playing this. Uh, this is a the, the the size of the screen is actually cool. I like that. That's part of the game. You have to scoot across the screen to get over there because you're moving, the thing's moving. And if it put the thing too close to you, it'd be too easy. I like the fact that it uses the whole screen. It does a great job. It does the use the entire screen. The graphical representation of you, your enemy, and the sh and the uh, shots you fire and the shots he fire are great. Yeah, uh, they look good. Uh, this is this right here was a winner. I played the crap out of this. I'm sure I beat your high score because I well apparently I, not because you never even got the time. I scored, well, I mean, if it extended, I didn't even see it. I scored I scored uh, up over 800 points on one of my yeah, games. 600 points, you get a, a time extension. Yeah, well, I got if you it. scored 2,000 points, you get into the wizard or to the warriors all. This was this was cool. You got it had high score entry, which I yep. you can see here. I'm entering it because I'm awesome, and I did better than that too. I played this a lot. Good game. Built-in instructions. Uh, you, you have to use a greater than, less than symbol, which is I'll, some of the other games let you actually pick your keys, you know, which I like I that better. I told you what it was. But still, I'd rather have the arrows than the greater than, less than symbol. But, but that was literally the only flaw. I love. I thought this game was a real, a, a real, this is the gem of the group right here. So I, I personally think that it was a good choice by you. And I, this is what I missed. I don't know how I missed it because yeah. I, I didn't play it. Graham. Graham says, this is a 7 out of 10 and the pick of the bunch. But boy, is it unfair. You control a ship at the bottom of the screen and the alien's at the top. The alien has a diag deadly diagonal shot that never misses. The alien can also move forwards and towards you, making it harder to hit. But you can only move left and right. I can see having lots of replay value, even though it is quite tough to play. I liked it. I thought it was, I mean, once you realize that you've got to move, baby, to, to not get killed, yeah. you're, you've got... You've, that really helped. It that really helped. May, forcing you to move was a good choice. Yeah. It was really a good choice. So let's, I've got one bonus game here that I, I just threw in the list because I thought it was interesting. I'm going to, we're going to talk about it just real quick. I didn't get to play this and one. And this game is straight up Frogger. Frogger, y'all. I wanted to put this on here because I thought I did a good job uh, playing a decent game of Frogger. Now, there's nothing in this that says you're a frog, you don't look like a frog, and there is no creek. But you're a dude. It looks like a dude just like walking across traffic. Did you, you haven't had, you didn't have no, a look at this I one? No, I didn't. <laughs> No. This one was fun. Uh, you start at the bottom of the screen. You've got to go over two two different lanes of obstacles. There's a medium lane. It looks like train tracks. Two more lanes, and you go up to your little frogger holes. And uh, uh, Please don't call them frogger rinse, holes. Well, they're guy holes now. Uh, <laughs> is that better? <laughs> what? Got a frog guy hole? Okay, wonder hole. How's that? That do it for your mystery hole. Uh the uh, uh, as you play this thing, the, uh, uh, the the timer gets less and less. But I mean, I cried. I did great at this. I, I was. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. And again, this is another game. Listen, this is this is a true arcade port. I like Phoenix. This is an actual port of an arcade game. And I thought uh, this is another one that lends itself to the long screen because it gives you extra replay. You got extra play on the sides. I thought this was cool. Just looking at it without playing it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Give me your score. Six out of ten. I like it, man. Okay. This, uh, having seen it for the very first time, yeah. uh, looks decent, but also incredibly boring because everything's moving at the same pace. It looks like it would be incredibly easy. Oh, it gets hard. Take my word for it, man. I, I'll have to because I wasn't. I, I didn't get a chance to play this one. I, I, I threw this one as a bonus. So I just wanted to mention because I thought it was. I thought it was kind of fun. So 
that's those are the games we looked at, Brandon. Any final parting thoughts on this machine as we shut shut her down? Uh, <clears throat> I'll have to say none of these games are good enough to go out and emulate the system, uh, unfortunately. However, yeah. <clears throat> uh, if you are going to emulate the system and you are going to give these games a look. Uh, I would certainly take a look at Phoenix before I would take a look at anything else. Yeah. Unless you just want to try to solve the mystery that is the Tolkien affair. Yeah. Uh, which I, I'm as soon as we get done here, I'm going to go and try again. I will say, if you're into text adventures uh, or just basic programs from back in the day, this is the machine that'll do it for you. They had I went through tons of different text adventures uh, on this thing, and uh, they're perfectly serviceable. You can I mean, plenty easily read. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. If you want to. This is one of those machines, if you want to walk into uncharted territory uh, to try something totally fresh, this is the system for you. Something else that's totally... Oh, I should mention, before I go into my baloney. Uh, you can pick one of these things up between 75 and 200 bucks. Go for it. I almost picked one up this week for 30 bucks, but the screen had a little damage. I was like, eh, I'll pass. Let's I'll not, buy this for 30 bucks. Let's not pass on the, the wheel. Get that is thing. that your segue that's now? That's it. Get it out here. Get that thing out here. Whoa. Brent has once again, I begged him, please, Brent, please. But he wouldn't listen. Tell him what you put on there this week, Brent. <clears throat> we have got the F Fujitsu <laughs> Micro 7. Say it again. The and, <laughs> and in our Retro Rewind, we have the Amstrad CPC. CPC. So there you go. You got a preference, Aaron? I wouldn't mind. I haven't done the Amstrad for a while. so I'm looking for, I would like some uh, 50 hour games. Right. That would be pretty cool. Alright, pick something. Go for it. Oh, man, that's a... Now listen, no one can say you're a doctor in these spins. Yeah, Bob, I'm not good enough. Bob Barker would have dropped to his knees oh, on that Oh, oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Aaron. What's the winner? Tell me what uh -oh. we got. It's the Acorn Archimedes. Yes! <laughs> Finally! I've been waiting to do this thing for a long time. The Acorn Archimedes. That is the stuff right there. Me and Boat have often lamented how we don't have one of these things. Listen, it's the Archimedes. That name is awesome. It is awesome. I'm anxious. I, you know, it's amazing that never has come up. Good job. I didn't know that was even on the wheel. Next it, it week. just came up. Next week, it's Acorn Archimedes time, gang. That's going to be the bomb. Are you excited? Yes. No, let me tell you something. This is the least obscure thing we've done in months. <laughs> All right? Let me have this. Okay? <laughs> Just give me this. You're killing me. So, uh, Brent, lay down the official news. Brent is here with the official news. Go! Uh, hi, everybody. Your merch news, you idiot. Oh! Uh, we have merchandise. It, <clears throat> we currently have two magnets and a lanyard, but I'm not putting them up for public sale until I get a sample of the final result. Uh, but they're, they're pretty neat. One is featuring the wheel, and one is featuring the logo, and then the lanyard actually uh, goes across all the shows that we have available, minus the uh, Atari show, because I don't know how official that is yet, but... Uh, oh yeah, it's official. Alright, well, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go back and change it then, and, and add it, uh, all the man. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's fine. I'll see what I can do. Um... Also, we are going to be doing uh, a photo shoot right after this show to uh, get our t-shirt online. So, that should be coming. We should have at least the graphical sample of the t-shirt next week and hopefully have the merch from this week next week. I wish you'd told me. I would have brought my hairpiece. Uh-huh. Exactly. So, Sounds that's about good. it. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh be sure to listen to us. We've got our. Be sure to listen to us. We've got <laughs> Don't our. Don't you think they've done that just now? <laughs> you, you didn't let me finish. Be <laughs> sure to listen to us at our back catalog at anchor.fm. Uh, all of our old shows are on there. If you're really uh, uh, hard pressed to hear more of us, you can go listen. and listen to one of those. Ignore that. Here's what you oh. do you get on there, you go back. We all know what you want. All action max all the time. Relive the glory of the Action Max. I loved it. Go ahead. Well, actually, please go watch our first child Channel F reviews. It is the least watched and least listened to show we've ever done. And that's saying something. It is. It really is. <laughs> that's the way she goes, though. Um, I want to thank our good buddy, The Dunk. 
the dunk, Brent Duncan Styles, for his incredible scrolling, Tron like three dimensional graphics that he made for the show. They look awesome. Yes. I gotta thank our good buddy, the Bark Bit. He'll he'll bite you. He'll also make you some good tunes. Yes, he will. Thank you for the closing theme for ARG Presents, and thanks everyone for joining us in the chat. We had a good turnout today. A lot of uh, a lot of wacky antics involved. A lot of people showed up. I love it. Also, the stream almost didn't completely die, so we got that going. But <laughs> bam, that's one more for Hillbilly Eyes. Eighty percent, baby. That's right. <laughs> so next week, Acorn Arca freaking meaties. It's gonna be awesome, dude. It's gonna so be something. join us for that. Same bat time, same bat channel. And until then, away. Ta-da!